We'll take our next step in non-dimensionalization by considering a system with two terms, um, the advection diffusion equation. This is a partial differential equation for the evolution of some quantity C um, that is being influenced under both advection, that's this bit here, and also by diffusion, this bit here. Here we don't have an equation for the velocity u. We're not yet solving a coupled system of equations. So the, um, the, the velocity u here is just some prescribed constant, some wind, some flow, um, and the, the c is being carried along by it while also diffusing. So let's, let's non-dimensionalize this system. Um, as before, we're going to do the same, the same sort of trick. We're going to do um, a, a transformation effectively. We're going to um, create our, our, our physical variable t is going to be some um, characteristic time scale tau and then some non-dimensional t, which I'll represent here in green. Um, let's do that for the rest of our terms in the system. We're going to have our u is going to be some uh, characteristic u and then some non-dimensional u. We're going to have some um, length scale um, x that's given by some uh, characteristic length scale and a non-dimensional x. And we'll have our, our concentration variable here, our scalar um, or other transport variable. Our c is given by some characteristic value uh, characteristic times um, a non-dimensional c. Um, again, all, all three terms here have uh, a c in them. All, all the terms are linearly dependent on c, and so the presence of this concentration c, uh, the characteristic c, it'll show up in every single term and it'll basically just cancel out of the system. So let's, let's pull our dimensional parts out of our of our system as a reminder, something like d by dt, a derivative like this, this goes to a 1 over tau times now the non-dimensional derivative in time d by dt, non-dimensional, non-dimensional. And that's basically the whole, the whole story with non-dimensionalization applied consistently throughout. So let's rewrite our advection diffusion equation um, in, in a non-dimensional form, or in a, in a dimensional form with the constants pulled out front, and then we'll multiply through to non-dimensionalize it. So our first term, d by dt um, of c, so this is a c over tau times the quantity d by dt non-dimensional of c. Okay, and then we're going to have our advection term. So this is going to have a u characteristic um, times u dot grad c, so there's going to be a c characteristic, let's remind ourselves that this c is characteristic, over um, our l for our length scale associated with our gradient, u dot grad c. And then this is equal to, I'll write our non-dimensional bits first so they can help guide us, our Laplacian of c. So to get our Laplacian of c, we have our diffusion coefficient, that's from the physics of the problem, we have our C characteristic, and from our Laplacian, we get a length scale squared. Okay, so the first thing that we do when we're non-dimensionalizing equations, um, especially when we have multiple terms, is, uh, is we, we clean things up. We take this first term here, and we multiply it through. Um, we multiply one over it through to, to clean up our system and, and make the first term um, empty, um, uh, with no terms in front of it. D by dt, c, it's often handy to do that on the, um, on the time derivative term. Uh, again, um, every single term has a c characteristic in it, so we can just cancel these out uniformly um, without, without any confusion to ourselves. So this becomes a u characteristic times tau over l times u dot grad c and then this is equal to and we get a d times tau over l squared times the laplacian 
of C, the non-dimensional Laplacian. All right. We now have two different terms. Right? We have um, we have one term here uh, that's advection related, and we have one term here that's diffusion related, and these are both non-dimensional numbers composed of dimensional quantities. There is, in general, no way to have both of these equal to one um, unless the, 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 the velocity itself is given by the diffusion time scale. So um, cannot, cannot both be equal to one unless we have that u c tau over l is equal to d tau over l squared, which implies that u characteristic in this very odd situation is equal to d over l, and u characteristic is the diffusion velocity. And that doesn't usually, that's not usually the case. We're considering advection. This U characteristic is some flow. Um, and it's not, um, it, it's not, there's no reason to expect that it's the flow given only by diffusion in the system. It's like the flow of a river or the flow of air through a room from a fan or whatever else. Um, there, we have no reason to expect that the characteristic velocity is the diffusion velocity. So that means that not that both of these can't be one at the same time. So we have to make a choice. We, we choose that one of these is one or the other is one. Basically, the, the time scale is set by either the advection bit or that it's set by the diffusion bit. And let's let's look at these two choices. Let's start first with the, with the choice we've made previously. Um, so we have choice one, and that's gonna be the, um, the diffusion time scale. So for choice one, we let tau equal L squared over D. This is a diffusion time. If we do that, then our non-dimensional form goes like this. It's D by DT of C um, plus, and we've got the quantity um, U times tau over L. So this becomes uh, u times tau over l. This is u times l squared over l d. One of our l's cancels. This becomes u l over d. All right. And this is then times our u dot grad c. And this is equal to our d times tau over l squared times the Laplacian of c. But this just becomes 1 because we've defined our tau to be the diffusion time. So under the choice of the diffusion time, our, our system takes this form. It takes the form d by dt of c plus um, u dot grad c is del squared c, and in front of the u dot grad, we've got a u l over d. And this is a dimensionless number that controls the system, um, and we call this dimensionless number pe, or the Peclé number. Peclé number. A Peclé number is telling us something about the ratio between the strength of advection versus the strength of diffusion in our system. All right. Um, the next version we'll see is if we do choice two. Um, so in choice two, we're gonna take an advection time scale. Um, so we're gonna take that tau is equal to um, L over U. So previously we had that tau was L squared over D. Now, now it's the crossing time of the flow L over U. So let's let's write this system down. So this is D by DT of C plus 
Um, we have our u tau over l, um, but that again is just going to be one by the choice of time scale we've made times u dot grad c. And this is equal to d times tau over l squared. That's our dimensional combination for a non-dimensional number. We'll put in our time in just a moment and evaluate what that looks like. So as we, as we put this time in, right, this is equal to d and we put our tau in. So that's an l over u over l squared. The squared cancels, the L cancels, and we get that this is D over U L, um, which is just one over the Peclet number. So we've got we've got two different versions of our of our system. Um, we've got D by D T of C plus the Peclet number, Peclet number, Peclet number there times u dot grad c is del squared c. This is a diffusion time scale. Tau is l squared over d choice. Or we have that d by dt of c plus u dot grad c is equal to one over the Peclet number, del squared c tau here is equal to L over U. So we have choice one and we have choice two. And it's tempting to look at these two and say, well, one's just dividing the Peclet number across. But the, the difference between the two is that in both cases, the time derivative D by DT is a, is a, is a bare term. There's no number out in front of the D by DT here. Um, it's just a D by DT of C. And that's because the first equation under choice one evolves on a diffusion time scale. That is a characteristic time. And in choice two of non-dimensionalization, the characteristic time is the advection time scale. When you see a non-dimensionalized system of equations, um, when you have them in a form where the, um, where, the, where the time derivative has no leading term in front of it, then if there are any other terms with no... Um, leading uh, dimensionless numbers in front of them, that gives you a clue that that system was non-dimensionalized on that time scale. So in two, when there's no non-dimensional number in front of the advection term, that tells us that the time scale for two is the advective time scale. Um, likewise, in equation number one, when the diffusion term and the time derivative have no non-dimensional numbers in front of us, that clues us into the fact that the system's been non-dimensionalized on the advection or on the um, the diffusion time of of the uh, of the of the quantity C. Now, in both of these systems, um, we have a peck lane number as the non-dimensional term, and it it just shows up in different spots. Um, in our uh, in our choice one system, um, peck lay shows up here, and when it's very large. Um, then the advection term is large. In our diffusion system, the Peclet number shows up down here. And when it's very large, the diffusion term is very small. When the Peclet number is very small, the diffusion term is larger. All right. Um, what is this Peclet number? Um, what of uh, Peclet, uh, which we often represent as PE? Um, the Peclet number is given uh, essentially as a, a ratio of times. It's a ratio of the diffusion time scale to the advection time scale, tau u. Um, and the, the Peclet number really at a fundamental level is measuring what is the size of the u dot grad c term compared to the diffusion of C governed by a physical diffusion coefficient D. Um, the, the bars around this um, signify that we're making some sort of norm or measure of this over a system. And we have to define that for this to be well posed. And if one's not careful, 
Um, one could see that this locally could go to infinity because, say, the Laplace and goes to zero or other things like that. So, so measuring this takes a little bit of care in some real fluid system. Now, we often get at these by heuristics rather than direct measure, but in both lab experiments and in um, numerical experiments, it is possible to get direct measures of this in the system if one is careful. The, the Peclet number that's this ratio of time scales, um, it's, it's likely for a well-chosen length scale to be um, similar to L squared over D, that's our, our diffusion time, divided by um, L over U, that's our advection time, which itself is um, the characteristic U times L over D. And the, whether this estimate of the Peclet number will be a useful one or not depends entirely on whether or not the length and velocity scales have been chosen well for the, for the fluid system. And they're not always the most obvious largest scale length and, um, and largest scale velocities. Some takeaways to leave you with. Um, if we have one term in the system, then all time scales are set by that term. If there are two terms in the system, we'll have a non-dimensional number, like the Peclet number we found here that tells us about the ratio between those two terms. Um, and as you add more physics or terms to your system, um, you would expect that you would get more non-dimensional numbers um, showing the ratios of those various effects. Here we've had two terms, we've had one ratio between them, we've had one non-dimensional number. Um, if we had three terms, we'd expect that there would be two non-dimensional numbers, most likely. Um, lastly, once you pick a length and time scale, use them consistently, um, often the system will suggest to you what those lengths and time scales should be based on setting um, one or more terms to be equal to one in the non-dimensional form.